What up, Whiskey Ginger fans? Welcome back to the show. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. Thank you so much. Please subscribe down here or down there. I don't know which way it is. Please go and rate us. Give us five stars. Leave a nice comment. Do all that good stuff. Let us know what you like about the show. Uh, we appreciate it. You spreading the Whiskey Ginger word around town. If you want to know where I am around your town, go to andrewsantino.com for tour dates. Right now, I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Tomorrow night, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Then next week, I'm in Philly, which is the hometown of our very special guest, Lil Dicky. Uh, then after that, I go to Chicago, uh, then I go to Connecticut, then I go to Cincinnati and Cleveland. Of course, I end that month next month with the Skank Fest in Houston with all those wild, out-of-control people. Of course, the rest of the dates are up at andrewsantino.com. I'm going to be going to Miami and Seattle and Portland, and we're adding dates like Houston and Dallas. We're all over the place. But go to andrewsantino.com for all the dates. That's where our Patreon link is as well. For Patreon, it's one-on-one -on -one stuff with me. It's also live Q&A. Uh, and solo episodes, so it's a whole separate chunk of stuff, plus discounts and cool codes that you can get into, um, including our inc incredible merch page, which is up there right now. Again, go to andrewsantino.com for all that fun information, but for now, I'm going to get out of your way. Enjoy the episode. Whiskey Ginger fans, if you're looking to promote an idea, to create a small business, to do whatever you need to do online, Squarespace is the way to go. You need help creating a website like most of us. We don't know what we're doing when we jump on there. Squarespace is incredible. Um, they have beautiful, high-class, high-end templates that you can choose from. You can create your own from scratch. Um, it's got extremely powerful functionality, very user-friendly. Um, they're incredible. And uh, everything is uh, optimized for mobile right out of the box, which is convenient because everybody is on these things anyway. You can make it yourself. You can do it yourself. You can create it yourself, or you can use help that they give you, which I think is incredible because I'm not good at that stuff. So you can blog, publish. Uh, you can promote shows, you can announce upcoming events, birthdays, whatever you, whatever you need, really. Uh, Squarespace is the spot to do it. It's incredible. It really is so easy to use. And uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend using Squarespace of all the other uh, website creators that are out there. They seem to be the most user-friendly. Um, that has great customer service, and they're awesome with one-on-one -on -one stuff. So they can help you out get your business, get your website, get whatever you need online started and off the ground. Uh, do yourself a favor, head, go to squarespace.com slash whiskey. That's squarespace.com slash whiskey for a free trial. When you're ready to launch your page, use the offer code whiskey, like we always do for 10% off your first purchase of a website and or domain. Once again, squarespace.com, create that website, use the code whiskey, get yourself 10% off. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey. Whisk, whisk, whisk. Oh, that creature in the ginger beard! Sturdy and ginger. Like vampires, the ginger gene is a curse. Gingers are fugitives. You owe me $5 for the whiskey and $75 for the horse. Gingers are hell no. This whiskey is excellent. Ginger. I like gingers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Whiskey Ginger. My guest today is one of my favorite people on earth. I say that for all my guests, but I mean it once again today. Very sincerely, mm. it is Dave Bird, a.k.a. Lil Dicky, a.k.a. the Philly Phenom, yeah. the Juicy Jew. All those. Uh, the Ketamine King. No, you don't use drugs. Say no to drugs. Yeah, I don't have tried. Dude, I love you. Thank you so much for coming. Cheers you to too. you. Cheers. And the eyes? Yeah. Remember? In it's the eyes. good luck, or it's bad luck otherwise, actually. Do you know why that is? No. Tradition? Because if you're not looking someone in the eyes when you cheers, it means you might have done something to the drink. Oh. It's a level of dishonesty. That's logical. It's like crossing the finger behind your back. Interesting. Well, that's amazing, but this is high end whiskey. Very good whiskey, right? Mm. I only get, I, I would only brought out the good jazz. You know, I had never even had whiskey. Like I didn't know what like if I even liked whiskey until about six months ago. Like I never had a night where like I drank whiskey and I did. One night, like a Saturday night. And yeah. it was the time of my life. But then the next day I was incredibly hungover. What do you, when we went out, what do you usually have when we go I don't out? Know, I don't have like a go-to, like when I'm at a bar, like I, I feel like it's pathetic that I, every time I order a drink at a bar, I still have to sit there and think. Every time I sit there and think. And what then, did you do when we were in Vegas? What did you have when we were in Vegas? Probably like a tequila soda lime or something. I don't even like it. I don't like any of it. I, I, if it was me, up to me, I'd get like, uh, what's the, a hot toddy. You know, everywhere You could get a hot toddy? Nah, you can't. It's Why not? Hot water is always accessible. You That's can't. at any bar they have a hot water thing. I've gotten looks. Okay, what about this? This is incredible. So just ask for high-end. I'll give you a list of high-end bourbons and whiskeys that you can ask for, that you just ask for one or two cubes in there. What about the hangover? You have to drink a water every two or three of these. Okay. I say chug a water for every two of these. How much does this thing cost? The booze inside of it? The whole bottle. When, it is... when that's full? Yeah. It's like a $150 bottle of booze. Okay. It's reasonable. Yeah, it's not like 10 grand. 
No, no, my God! Do you think we're drinking ten grand shit? I thought, um, I thought it was possible. I thought it was possible. <laughs> How about was, this? You said it was high end. It is very high end. Yeah. Uh, that being, I said reasonable. It's not I don't think anything. People at home are like, like that's not grand. fucking high end. Yeah. No, there is there shit is. like that. That's absurd. But like, um, the difference is like, mm. it probably costs, it probably costs a reasonable amount for yeah. high end whiskey. But it, the resale value is through the roof because not a lot of people can get their hands on it. Sure. I'll tell you all about it afterwards. Yeah. It's sneaky, sneaky stuff. Sometimes I get some sneaky, sneaky stuff, you know? I'm open-minded to hearing all that. I know you're very open-minded. You <laughs> kissed me on the lips multiple times. Yeah, that's cool. This is the thing This is the thing that I want to tell people about you and our relationship. I introduce you as Dave Bird, of course, because Dave is how I know you. Lil Dicky is how people know you yeah. uh, to a degree. Mm-hmm. We're, we're doing a television show that's coming out in literally one week. In yeah. one week. Yeah, it's and, so uh, And it's called... Dave. It's called Dave. Yeah, not Little Dicky. No, not Little Dicky. Yeah. We, we, you were actually going to make it Dave, comma not Little Dicky when you initially. Yeah. yeah. Just cluttery. Too much, right? Too clunky. Too clunky. Yeah. Too many words. <laughs> yeah. No, I just I don't know. Like you know, obviously I have great pride in being Little Dicky and being a rapper. Like I really, it's the best thing I've ever done in my life. But when people come up to me on the street and they go like. Yo, Dicky! Like I don't even like relate to that name. Like it's not. Well, it's not who you are. No, like I feel like it's you know. So I'm just like excited for the, the day where people call me Dave when they see me. Now they're gonna call you Dave. I hope so. I mean, marketing would have it as so. Well, the billboard is great. If people haven't seen the billboard, uh, it's uh, strong billboard. It's Dave popping out of his own underwear. Yeah, it's my real legs too. They did photo. I think there's a little bit of there's hair. some Photoshop. Let's not. Hair I've seen your legs. I like your legs, but those are a little bit photoshopped. Yeah, yeah hair And removal. your happy trail is photoshopped. Yeah, it, it's true. But my but, but the the strength you see in my core in the picture is I think that's all you. I think it's accurate. Those yeah. fuck gutters are you. Yeah, you have those. Huh? You got those fuck gutters. Yeah, I, I have, but only because of genetics. Like I don't. You have a thin those. frame for someone who doesn't. You don't work out. Yeah, I don't. I don't really work. I mean, I I could, but honestly, I have so much body acne that it's just like, what's the point? But you have back acne, not body acne. Uh, I should. See, I mean, the stomach is. It's becoming. I'm starting to get stomach acne. What? I know. I never. It's ridiculous. When we we shot a couple of scenes in the show where we would have our clothes off together. Yeah. I'm not going to divulge any more than that because you got to see the fucking show. Yeah. By the way, it comes out a week from today. I didn't even say it comes out on FXX on Hulu and yeah. uh, there's another platform. But whatever, look at the yeah, fuck up. Just you're, if you can't find it, you're numb. You're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. I promise. Me too. Um, and essentially, we did a couple of scenes together where we would get we had less clothes on. You had a lot of less clothes scenes, which yeah, is you did of, right. You had a lot of, of nude scenes. Yeah. Oddly enough, you yeah. put for someone who's self conscious about their their body acne, yeah. you put yourself in. Yeah, I wanted to show the body acne. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like it's uh, liberating in a sense. Like honestly, I've been hiding it from women for years. Where like we're like, if it was on my back, like if you know, I was hooking up with a girl. Like when I go to the bathroom, like I'd I kind of walk out the door like with my back, I'd be like, all right, I'll see you in a second, and like I'd flip around real quick when I get to the door, so like they don't, you know what I mean? I like. But wouldn't they feel it when they hug your back? Not really. Do you make sure they don't touch your back? Uh, I don't make sure, but yeah, I'll fidget if it's, you know. So this is the thing I know about Dave. <laughs> this is the thing I know about our friendship that makes me laugh is you, you're very honest with me always. Yeah. And you've told me oftentimes how you've navigated your sexual life. The first night we had dinner together, we spent like two, three hours in Santa Monica talking about the navigation of sexual, of your sexual life God and how you have to have certain lighting yeah. always. Yeah. Yeah. You have to, uh, you make sure that when your penis is available for w- Suck, touching, sucking, whatever, sucking, sucking fucking, jerking. that it's in the perfect light yeah. and and ti- and timing, right? Yeah, fairly represented penis. You pre- yeah, you prep the dick for its for its big game. Yeah, I'll shave it because I I'm I'm kind of guy who's got hair growing all the way up his shaft, full shaft hair. You don't shave on your penis. I shave my actual whole dick. Come on, I swear to God, I've, my with what a razor, uh, not a. A ra- well, actually, use a buzzer, right? But specifically, like a, it's called like the ma- the manscaper. It's like it's designed for. They're one of the sponsors lawnmower. of this show. I, yeah. Really? Yeah. Swear to God. Well, I use something that's like designed to shave your dick, and like I mean, the, la- I, the landscape makes a thing called the lawnmower. That's and it's, exactly it's what it perfect is. Perfect on your yeah. penis. Yeah. And if I didn't, if I didn't like shave my dick, my dick would have like a beard, like ours. This would be your dick. Yeah, brown hair. Or black hair, man. Black. You have black hair on your dick? I don't know. I've, it's shaved so. Well, down seriously to though, the not bone. just your nutsack. It's on. It's, oh, on, it's on your penis. All the, like literally all the way up my dick. Why would that be? Because my dick's made of the wrong skin. I think my dick is made of my balls. Right. Um. So I'm serious. So I think like, because <laughs> uh, you know how your balls have hair. 
Yeah. So if your dick is made of that material, then it would in turn have hair. That's my. That's, I haven't. You know. That's your theory. I'm not a scientist, but that's my working theory. People need to watch the show because if you watch the show, you'll you understand all more. This There's shit. a lot more yeah, it'll come out. Yeah. But I've never, you never told me that, though. I don't think you told me there was the hair all the way up. So, I mean, I could. there's a few things that I oh. could still... Because I've seen... Life. I saw your dick, but I don't think... Well, you can't see hair. You can't even see it from no, it's, street I mean, I, level. No, I shave it. It's got to be up close. Yeah. Do you ever get razor burn? I mean, sometimes I'll nick it. There was one time where uh, I was you know, on tour. Yeah. And it was in Florida. And I had, like, hooked up with a girl in, this one girl in Florida... Uh, like the year prior and like I hit her and said like hey like I'm gonna be there and she was like great like we'll hang out so like it was kind of in the air that sex was gonna occur yeah you knew it so, to the point where like I shaved that morning mm. but I nicked my dick mm. and oh my god but, but it was nicked right around like where the shaft meets the the nuts the the not the nuts like the stu- like the pubiscus area like the pouch of fat on your body it was like oh right. so then I thought like would a condom cover this neck and then I got a boner put the condom on sure enough it didn't and what'd you do to get a test boner what did you do did you watch some porn oh I probably just thought about things for a few seconds can you get hard from just thinking about oh stuff? my god I, I you know guys that don't that are unable to get a boner I can't even understand like I'm hard if a girl even is holding my hand I have a boner no what? question yeah it's always a boner with a woman What's your quickest way? What's your quickest way to make it go away? If you if you get a, if you're Cream, getting a heart, huh? come, come, just come. But I mean, you're you're walking around, you're hanging out. She holds your hand. You're walking down uh, your street. You're going to a restaurant. Uh, I think about like death. Yeah. Who and, specifically? Uh, I actually think a lot about like Babe Ruth. Yeah, the baseball player. Yeah, and like his legacy. Yeah. And uh, just those kind of thoughts, like old classic teams. Yeah. Who are we talking like? Um, just the old, like, just like, uh, talking like 96 Knicks? Bulls. Oh, 96 Bulls. Yeah. And just like, I think about like the lineups. And, Horace Grant. And then, you like, go to I'll Horace Grant. Like, I'll envision like my, you know, grandmother who's dead. Like, I'll think about the fact that she is dead. Those kind of thoughts. Was she in a casket? Um, or she get cremated? Casket. But you never saw it, right? Jews don't do that. I love that. I've always said that. I really respect Jews for that. They don't get cremated? No, no, no. Jews don't do open caskets. You never really see the ca- inside the casket, right? From what I know, Jewish funerals, they don't... I don't know if that... I think I... I believe I had eyes on my grandfather. Bad Jews. Bad Jews. I, we're, I mean, I, I bet we are bad Jews. You are bad. You are bad I bet Jew. I am a bad Jew. You know, one time, I'm, I'm such a bad Jew that... So the last day of Hebrew school... Yeah. You know, I'm going there for five years, and it's like... Literally, like, I'm like 13 years old. I had just gotten bar mitzvah. It's like the last day. Yeah, it's senioritis. It's, it's, it's times a million. Mm-hmm. Everybody's horsing around. Yeah. All I'm doing is being a little extra chatty. And my teacher kicked me out of class. Mm-mm. I was doing nothing. I was literally just talking with my friends. like. And he, he kicked me out and my friend Joey out. And I thought it was very, I was just so, I was rubbed the wrong way. Yeah. So I went to the bathroom and I shit on the floor. You uh, In the bathroom? Of the so synagogue. you're polite enough to go to the bathroom, but you shit in the flo- on yeah. the floor. In my, the bathroom, on the floor, even synagogue. in a stall or just in a regular. It was in a stall. Like in, okay, it was right where the, it was so close. It was, I mean, that to me is the biggest statement. You could. Was, I'm right there, but I'm still making this choice. It's, it's like, kind of a fuck. Clearly, thing. it wasn't an emergency because like I'm there. Yeah. Um. And, but 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 it's in the stall still. And I kicked in a, a window screen. What? That's probably the worst I've, thing I've ever done in terms of like bad behavior. That is bad boy. Yeah. That's bad boy tendencies. Why would they kick it the last day of school? Maybe so, so pussy. Maybe he. Maybe he. Maybe he was just trying to teach you a lesson. Well, if he was, I didn't. Isn't, isn't it, Hebrew I, school I, all I went lessons? Out and shat on the floor and yeah. and committed like well, not arson, but whatever you do when you arson's fire. Yeah, well, destruction <laughs> of property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you pooped in the stall. I would think pooping in the common area to me would make more sense. Yeah, too many. Because Jews, pooping in the Jews st- walking around. Yeah, out there. See, yeah, you're still yeah. respectful. Yeah. Pooping in the stall is almost like giving someone the ring finger, middle finger. Like it's a fake out. It looks yeah. like the middle, like, hey, fuck you. But it's, yeah. I know what this that, is. Uh, even you tell, I still thought it was real. But this is my point. This yeah. is pooping in the stall. Yeah. This is pooping in the common area. Yeah. That's the stall. Common area was, a no, I mean, not even a possibility. I did a lot of bad boy stuff too. So yeah, I can Yeah, what's relate. the worst thing you've ever done in that kind of regard? As a little boy? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. As, as, as I did a lot of bad boy, stupid bad boy. I got kicked. You know, I have this running nickname on the podcast. People know this Slugger Santino's because I got kicked out of like two different schools for fighting when I was a kid. When I was a young kid too. Yeah. Not like a fucking, not like middle school. Why were you fighting? 
people would make fun of me because I was a redheaded person, so I just got very annoyed and angry. I guess that's a thing that redheaded people might go through as children. They get mocked. They get mocked. Yeah. So I would just. I had. I had zero tolerance. Yeah, you were swinging. I just hit as hard as I could. Yeah. Yeah. I would hit you as hard as I could. Yeah. And most times I would win, not just win. It would. It would. It was very bad. I would be scared to. I mean, I'm. Uh, I'm. I've never gotten in a fight. Uh, I imagine I'm a horrible fighter. But I think I like I would you know if I was in a confrontation and you were there I'd feel like better about my. You like, feel more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, listen, I I have a thing inside of me that I try to hide as an adult, but as a kid, couldn't get rid of it. Oh yeah, the rage. I just, I just didn't like people yeah. talking bad about me. Yeah. So I just, I would hit them as hard as I fucking could. Yeah. But yeah, but the, the worst thing I did was probably um. I mean, amongst a million things of like not like fighting, but like bad boy stuff was like. Uh, I think I've told the story, but there was a British girl, Lisa, who came. A brand new British girl who's very pretty, and she came to our school, and and a brand new British, brand girl. new British girl, yeah, like we just Fresh ordered out her. of the package, yeah, <laughs> yeah, hello, yeah, and then uh, we made fun of her on the bus incessantly because we all had a crush on her. All the all the boys had a crush on her, yeah. So we'd pick on her. Does she have, she had a British accent? Yeah. Oh my god, that's she was incredible. she was amazing. But we'd pick on her because we were crushing on her. Yeah, you know, nagging, nagging. We were nagging. Yeah, and so I would uh, we would mock her, and then we got pulled to the front of the bus. We had to sit in the front of the bus. And the bus driver hated me and these two idiots that I was friends with. And so we had to sit in the front. So we use this as an opportunity to write stuff on, on loose leaf paper yeah. and hold it up for the back of the bus to mm, see. Smart. Stuff like Lisa, you know, like... Lisa, suck my cock. Yeah, yeah Lisa eats yeah. my dick. You know, yeah. Lisa ate my dick this, you know, this morning. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, it was always like, uh, it was British puns too. We were, because some were pretty clever for how young we were. One time, you know, it's like Lisa, Lisa munch my crumpet, you know, stuff like that. I was such a little asshole. Like I would do anything for a laugh as a kid. Same. Like just, I remember one time the one of, this isn't even a good example, but just a British, the teacher like wrote the word chalk on the board and she, yeah. and she spelled it C-H-A-U-L-K. And I, I, first off in this class, like this is one, like it was a teacher who like, I feel like it was easy to take advantage of. And I did it. I mean, it's really a shame. Yeah. I did that shit all the time. Um, like I would like, I'd go like this, I'd go like this, you know, and then she'd call on me. This is you raising your hand this and, way? And I'd go, what? I'm not, I'm not raising, like who raises their hand? I'm not raising my hand. I'm just like stretching. And like I do stuff like, <laughs> like go to, I'd go to the pencil sharpener and like sharpen it for like 90 seconds. Oh, I used to do, I used yeah. to love shit like that. Uh, poor, but people, poor people, people that don't know, that was old for young kids that don't understand. There used to be a pencil sharpener at the front of a room in a classroom. There's no Why way that's around anymore. Uh, There's no way that exists anymore. Because of the mechanical pencil? Yeah. Fucking nobody uses regular old pencils anymore. I guess anymore. you're right. Oh my god! And the I love the turnstile oh, one. The crank felt well, so you good. Cranked it, and it didn't feel as good as the insert. And the like yeah, that. but the insert was usually on a teacher's desk. If you had a cool teacher, they'd let you use that. Yeah. It would always fuck it up a little bit, though. <laughs> You had so much more control on a wall shaving pencil shaver because you could really kind of balance the weight of you how you did it. You mold your own. You mold your tip. own. You're mold, yeah. You shape your own tip, but with the <laughs> with the yeah. when you inserted it, oftentimes it'll go further than you need to just because of the way pleasure. too far. Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to get one of those right now. And just stick pencils in it all fucking well, day I long. I had to do math and like doing. I mean, why are they even teaching math? What do you think we should be teaching instead of math? Uh, like. Proper like sex ed, sex ed, real yeah. sex ed. Yeah, like proper like that, like how to like you know fuck right. What's the what? <laughs> <laughs> what's the one thing you'd want to learn if you could have gone back and learned? Not n- knowing what you know now, if you could have been like, oh, I'm teaching sex ed. This is the one thing I want to tell kids that they don't know. Or a few things. What are what are some of the things that you're like, man, we never learned this. Uh, how to make a girl come? I would say it should be taught in school. That'd be incredible. I mean that. I mean that wholeheartedly. As a youth, I, I could, you have no idea what it's... You don't think girls come... You don't know girls come when you're a young boy. You don't understand it. You think sex is come. This is a little... It's not off topic, but I'm just piggybacking that last comment. Give it to me. I found that sometimes like I'll, I'll hook up with a girl and like my... You know, I've got a best friend, Benny. You've met Benny. I know. I love Benny. Yeah. And he'll be like, did she come? And then I feel like more often than not, I'll say, I didn't have clarity. Yeah. Because it's vague. There are, t- I mean, there are, there because there are so many times where like a girl will sound like she just came, you know, it'll be ramp up, ramp up, ramp up, like moaning. It's a and big th- And I'll be like, did you, so I said, did you come? And she'll say, oh no. And then I'll be so confused. And there'll be times where I don't hear any of that. And I'll say, did you come? And they'll say, oh my God, three times. You didn't, you didn't know. Yeah. And I just have no clarity. Ever. Right. That's what I mean. The vagueness. And I'm too sexually insecure to, to, to like, you know, when I, when I, I don't know. Sometimes Do I you go down? Uh, I went four years without going down. 
Like throat cancer awareness. Um, the fear. Yeah, just yeah, just I don't know. I didn't. I just and then and then, like, and then I I did it for the first time in four years, and then I did it like six times that month. You had a blast. Yeah, it was a month of. Month of just eating oral box. sex. Yeah, and now, I was gonna say for that month your beard did smell. Yeah, that was like a, a really bad. It's a little. I don't know. It's. It, it's. Honestly, you don't like it. I like pleasing a woman. Like, yeah. I, do I, do am I like I, I wish there were there that like that there were other ways to please them that didn't just because it's like it's I don't have the right jaw. Yeah, you think like, that's I just a jaw I have structure? like a jaw issue, and it's like I just don't have the right jaw, and like my I don't have the tongue that like rapidly flicks. Like I yeah, like my tongue I can't do that. Can't do so, that. So then I'm just like kind of moving my head around at a rapid rate. So you're kind of just like, like freaking out. Yeah, and then, and then I feel like if like you're having a seizure, and then I feel crazy. But like some, I don't know. It depends. It really depends. Like that month, I was enjoying it every step of the way. You did. You did. I enjoyed it. Yeah. What did you take a break from? Uh, Why did you stop? Neck pain. And it does. It does hurt the neck. <laughs> At and some so, point, you're over it. And I don't even, I, and then I also don't even love like getting head. Like, I like getting hand jobs more than head. Yeah, like, you've told me this, I've and got it pisses me off every time made, we talk it's about it. It's made of it. different I material. can't fucking believe you do. Why? Nobody likes a hand job more than a blow job. There's no way. I like it infinitely more. But they have to have, what do you, do you have to have lotion or something nearby? Lube is great. You know, you, I mean, I have lube nearby. But just sitting around? Yeah. What if you're hooking up in a random lube. space? What oh, are you going to do? I have it. You so got to plant it everywhere? I have it planted. In you have a lube plant in every room in your house? I have where a woman would be. I have lube, like I have in the downstairs living room. There's like a little bottle. You had one, but in the TV room down there. Yeah, you do down there. And it's like, it's like in the couch, like in like no one will ever look there. <laughs> but it's like it's not in a drawer. What about in the front room? What do you have in the front living room? That's what I'm speaking of, not the downstairs TV room. I, I never bring a girl in. That's downstairs. It's the boys' room. That's. For, I was yeah. just gonna and say I that's have our two space. separate bedrooms where it's like wedged and. But wait, what was that? We we're just talking about lube and oh, you know my ideal way to come, which I've never actually experienced via a girl because it's too ridiculous. I just yeah. do it myself. And we should talk about the Oculus because I've been spending an insane, insane amount of time so much in time the virtual the space. Yeah. Uh, but my ideal way to come is I have a boner and I, I take it and I just kind of slightly bend it up a up, little bit. You bend it up. A little bit like that and then I just wait to come. I just sit there and I wait. What? And I'll come the most I can come. So I just really like want to be comfortable with a girl to ask her to do that because it's such a insane request to say you, hey it doesn't take need your to be pulled or two tugged? fingers and just kind of n- just adjust my dick a little straighten it out a little bit really from like 70 to 86 degrees and i'll just sit and think and I, i'll it'll, it'll be a, a tremendous orgasm what yeah do you still shoot a good shot no normally i ooze oh you got a drip you got a you got a ooze, drooler but when yeah. when it's hit, when it's bent up like that you get a good shot i might shoot wow yeah you want a woman to just be able to pull it up. That's really what it is? Mm-hmm. Tell us about the Oculus. Explain to people what it is and people that it's don't know. It's the virtual reality helmet thing. It's yeah. like VR. Yeah. You know, I'd always, I always imagined VR porn. Yeah. And I like, thought, this should be a thing. And then I just, I don't know. I'm actually shocked. Like, you don't have an Oculus, do you? No. Like, I feel like guys know about it, but they don't, like, it has changed everything. Go on. Like, I haven't, I got an Oculus about eight weeks ago. And I've not jerked off in, like, the two-dimensional space since. Because it's, that's old school now. It's just literally because they shoot it. It's not like just like, oh, you see the normal porn, but they kind of 3D. It's like you're watching porn that's shot from a POV perspective. Like I, I go like this and I'm, I look at like the closet right next to me and I'll look back and I'll see like the girl's tits with like the weight. Like I'll the see like the, of the shape of moving. the tits. Yeah. Like and it's, yeah, and it's, it's incredible. That is wild. But th- there is one, da- there's two downsides. One, it's like, you know, I jerk off after uh, I like wash and like shower and everything. To I, I don't jerk off before. I, the last thing I do before I go to bed is jerk off. And with the Oculus, it's like I don't like doing it like it's in my face after I wash my face. I just feel like it's like not necessarily the best thing for my skin. One, uh, <laughs> two, it covers just your eyes, right? No, it's like pressing my greasy hair against my forehead. All right, all right. Two. You know the shame you feel, or not the sh- the b- when you come watching porn and like you're done, and it's then like, shame, and then it's just like, ugh, that you feeling. feel bad. There's it's times a million when you have to remove this helmet and then you're back in like the real world and you're yeah. like, it's like you're, you're you're there and then you take it off and like you're like in your shitty room. Yeah, it's gross. And you're just sad. like, fuck. You just like escaped like the matrix. It's like, do you think it'd be better if if you li- if you lived in a palatial estate? It'd be better. Yeah, it would. My room is just very... But I mean, your, your house like my, is so nice. I know. I like my room, but... I know what you're saying. It, it puts you in check. It really is it like puts a you jarring, like, 
You know, what, you know what does that for me? What? Sometimes I I, uh, I play with my butthole when I jerk off. No, you don't. Yeah, I swear to God. I've talked about it on stage before. I just tickle it a little bit. So you jerk off standing up? No, I lay down, but I, sp I spread the eggs and t I spread the legs and tuck it around. Sp I spread my legs and I, pu I pull it around here and I play okay, with it. Okay, your hand. Yeah, I play with the oh, tush. Okay. Yeah. You finger, you put your finger in? Don't put it in. Just I tickle, I tickle the tush. Interesting. Yeah. The hole. If you press your thumb on your anus and you massage and you massage it a little bit, interesting. Very good, very very good. Surprisingly so. So a girl. No penetration. I don't want anything in it, but I tickle ta tickle tickle, and I got to tell you, when you come after That's that, the cum is great. The shot is amazing. Yeah, because there's more. There's the prostate. Yeah, thing. actually, some people say you can come way harder if you put a finger in your ass. But but after I tick after I'm tickling and I'm playing, you want to talk about feeling bad? I feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, walking like, my pants around my ankles. Yeah, balancing balancing it on the jizz on my chest. And the shit. And on I got finger. two dirty hands. Yeah, exactly. So I have two dirty yeah, hands. The two now. dirty hands is crazy. That's my problem. Yeah, that sucks. What was the Oculus cost? How much? Uh, I got mine for free, but I think it's like six hundred. It's I mean, it's worth it. Six hundred dollars. I think. They reach out to you, Oculus? No, Benny got it for me somehow. <laughs> Betty, yeah. Betty would get it. Yeah. If you don't know Benny Blanco, he's one of the greatest fucking music producers on the history of this planet. Yeah. Period. Benny is a magical unicorn of a person who showed up to set a few times. Yeah, he's in the show. But he showed up when he wasn't in the show. Yeah. To kick it. Yeah. And his and his girlfriend, friend, girlfriend, girlfriend. I don't know, his girlfriend. Yeah. Gorgeous, cool, dope, yeah, awesome. Yeah. Would be right. When you yeah. see when you know a guy like Benny. Yeah. He's an he's an Great enigma. Man. Yeah. He's like a, he's like you if you got compressed a little compressed bit. Compressed and like kind of like put in a machine that makes you look like Andre the Giant, like but combined with Joe Pesci. Yeah, he's thick. He's like mutilated facially. Yeah, but, but in a good way. Yeah, he's like so he's honestly so ugly that he's hot. Yeah, I went back went back yeah, all the way shot back out around. The other side hot. Do you think you're hot? Uh I think I'm cute. Yeah. And I think my success is hot. Is hot enough to make me switch from cute to hot. Oh, that's so I deep. guess I think now I might I might be hot to, but really I, I deep down know that I'm disgust like hideous because like I know I'm still. You like, mean the things that you do? No, the way like that you physically, look? the like, way that you yeah, look. Yeah, physically I know I'm hideous, but I, why I do you say that? Um, just like the amount of grease. Um, yeah, you're a greasy guy. Grease the nose, the uh, body acne. The, What's wrong with your nose? Uh, just like it's like just it's just it's just Jewish nose. It's nothing's wrong with it. It's just look that way. It looks pretty, it's normal. I don't think that's I don't think it's I don't it's think nothing it's, to complain about. No, it's not enough to complain about. How it's about really that? the body acne and the dick made of the wrong skin. But outside of that, it's you're fine. I'm cool. Don't you think everyone has those things? Um, I hooked I, up with I, a girl in college one time. That when she, this is a weird realization that people don't think I'm gonna have orange hair all over my body. That's foolish. But they just don't think about it. Yeah. But I don't have a lot of hair on my chest. No, I don't have hair on my you're hairless. No, yeah, none on my back. But my legs and and my beef. Yeah. And my scrum very hairy. How, you have a hairy. You put my scrum is so hairy. I have to shave. I have to you, trim down. You there. have pubic hair like a bush. Ton. Well, no, I tons unless I trim. It grows so fast. It's unbelievable. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Every other week I have to well, because it's too much. I shave mine all the way. No, I can't do that. It looks like a baby bald eagle. I can't Look do it, that. I need it to give yourself some some girth. Just like, uh, just, show, just it looks, yeah. I did, I so a girl in college saw, I had thick pubes at the time. Mm -hmm. And she literally said, ew, they're orange? It, it broke my heart. It like broke my heart into a million pieces. Yeah. So I knocked her out. Right. That's cool. You don't have, what, what else am I supposed to do? I mean, I'm not going to let her talk that way to me. Slugger Santino doesn't take that shit. No. But I, I did not with my fist with my elbow. I didn't want to go to prison, you know? Yeah. Elbow can seem like an accident. Yeah, I didn't do anything to her. I cried. I did. I cried in the car. And really? The yeah, hundred percent. Hurt my felons, bro. Hurt my felons. Yeah, that hurt my felons a lot. I don't like being. What's the worst heartbreak you ever had? Heartbreak? Yeah. Uh, my high school sweetheart. Is she listening? What's Probably. her What's her name? I, I don't want to say her name. What's her name? Um. Uh, Give her a name. Corey. Uh, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> Corey. But Shout the, out to Corey. Yeah, the girl's name. What did she do to you? Did she cheat on you? No. Well, no, she didn't cheat on me, but uh, we dated long distance. all. So <clears throat> dated her senior year of high school. Yeah. Went to two separate colleges. Date, stayed together all... Through college? Freshman year. Wow. Yeah. So I'm, That's all you know, I endured the whole year. And then with two weeks left until I was like about to like finally be back. With, and she also went to school in, in Canada, so she didn't have... Uh, Toronto? Uh, no. Ottawa, Montreal. Anyways, the, the fucking... Holidays don't even line up. 
So right. Like, you know what I mean? You couldn't so like, even do the holiday I barely break saw her. Right. And I finally was like getting to the point where like this, it was like, I'm finally made it through the year. It's the summer. I can't wait to see you and be with you. And she broke up with me with like two weeks left of school Bitch. and then started dating another guy for like Ooh. right after. The and guy she, you know? No. Okay. Some guy, but she, she did date the guy for two years. So it like, what, you know. That's justifiable. Yeah. Dude, I always say though, if they date, so I always say to the old bag, I, you know, my yeah. lady, I always say to her, if you leave me, but if you end up dating someone I know. I'll fucking kill both of you. You think you'd kill? I'd ki- I would murder. I'd go out and murder. I'd end up in prison for the rest of my life. Someone I fucking know of yeah. all the humans you on earth. You think you'd kill? Hundred <laughs> percent. I, 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 I don't even skip a beat with that. That's crazy. If it's someone I know. Yeah. If it's any other man that you leave me for, fine. That's you just, you that's just, how the world you just works. Beat him. That's just how the world works. Yeah. No, you lose. You lost. That's yeah. fine. You got to lose a couple of games. But if you date someone I know, fucking grounds for murder, because that means that you knew before. Yeah. He didn't tell me, or you maybe did something about it. You can't fuck somebody I know. Yeah. Dude, I know a guy in college. I'm not going to mention him. He used to fuck people's ex-girlfriends because he thought that was hot. Really? Yeah. He was turned on by the... By the idea that nature? he's that he's like getting one up on somebody. Probably in awful. deep-rooted insecurity with that yeah, guy. Yeah, but it worked for him because he was yeah. able to like scoop them up when they fell down, you know? Yeah. He was like this weird... He was like this weird superhero that he would be like a savior Yeah. for like someone's breakup. Yeah. I didn't like the it. The rebound. He, but he's, but yeah, he was Dennis fucking Rodman. This, he, was, he, was, he was the king of that shit. Yeah. He was the king. Yeah. Do you remember the first time you got drunk? Uh, my The thing that pops into my head was after prom. So I never drank. All, my parents were so strict. Yeah. Like I had to, at every time I went out Friday or Saturday, I had to come in at like 1130. Had to be before midnight. Yeah, huh? it was like an early curfew. I had to go up to their room, wake them up. This is their. This is what they wanted. Wake them up, blow into my dad's nose, and if my if it smelled like mint, I'm grounded. Okay, gum. Yeah, I'm grounded. Because he knows that yeah. you're trying to cover something up. So that was the press. So I was just like, and honestly, I was so scared uh, about doing it social. I actually like deep down liked that they were strict because I didn't even have to like put myself out there and like really like take risks socially like that. Right. Yeah, uh, that's like Munchausen syndrome. But exactly. But then after prom, you know, we were down the shore. I'm from Philly and, you know, people were drinking. So I took one shot, maybe two. And I remember thinking like, wow, you're drunk. I, I don't think I was. I'm sure I, I mean, you're probably just buzzed. Yeah. And then in college, all of a sudden I'm in college and I'd never drank except for that one night. And like everybody's getting blacked out. So like it was a kind of stressful social situation. And I remember I had those skinny shot glasses that are like the long, long tall yeah. ones. Yeah. And I, and some, I just thought that they were double shots. But they weren't. No, they're singles. So for the whole year, I was thinking I was taking like eight shots every pregame, but I was really just taking four. Yeah. And going out and just feel, like feeling like I was drunk. I mean, I guess I was drunk. I mean, it's no, all, you were drunk, yeah. but but still, like you're not. I was drinking four shots, not eight. Eight would have been a lot. Yeah. Eight sh- eight shots is a lot. By senior year, I was at a point where I would like drink like eight to twelve drinks like as a pregame, which is like absurd. Like if I, I did know. that now, I'd be hospital. I'd die. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing that you lose. I used to be able to drink all night, wake up the next morning and just walk to class yeah, or go do stuff that I bet I you're the do. kind of guy who like, you'll be out all night, you'll come back, it's 3 a.m. and like, you'll still like, you'll like go to the fridge and open and have like another drink. Like, one more. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. One for the ditch. That's I'm what ne- my dad calls it. One for the ditch. Yeah. 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 One for the ditch, which is like a turn of, it's a bad turn of phrase. Yeah. It's, it's, it's referring to when you crash your car at the end of the night. Oh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Don't drink and drive. Don't, man. don't drink and drive. Bad idea. I say that at all my shows. I say, don't drink and drive. And yeah. then I say, unless you live far. Yeah, or like then you just, sensitive. Then you just might have to do it. Yeah. <laughs> My dad does that. He loves Ant for the Ditch. He just loves the idea of like one last one. We're home. Ugh. That was always the thing with my see, my family was the opposite. With drinking, we are a drinking family. Yeah. We love drinking. We love, it's like a part of our culture. Yeah. It's what we do together. In fact, yeah. some of the best nights in my life have been drunk with my parents. My my uh what? Um I was home. I don't know what we were home for. Maybe it was Thanksgiving or but we were home. And uh, the old bag was back home with us, and she was staying sober for the night for some reason. Maybe she wasn't feeling well, but me, my mom, my dad, my sister, we were out, and we were getting fucking wrecked. And we went to this local bar, like the Crow's Nest or something. It it, it is a dumpster. It's a bad place, right? You can get your own beer. You give them money, and there's a cooler. You can just take it out as you please, right? It's Uh, phenomenal. uh Townie bar. That's what they call those, townie bars. Locals. Locals only, dude. Yeah, yeah. you're not invited unless yeah. you're a friend of the local. Right. We go out, we get trashed, and then we're singing and yelling in the car. And then as we pull into to the to my driveway from my parents' house, uh, "Come on, Eileen" comes on the radio. 
Come on, Eileen. Uh, you know this fucking song? Yeah. You know this? Yeah. It's a massive hit. Yeah. And well, white Irish people love that yeah. stuff. That's like for some, you know, because we have an Aunt That's Eileen. That's a great song. For us, it's like Eileen is us. Yeah. So we're screaming at the top of our lungs. And I look around. At some point, I realized that I have the greatest family on planet Earth. That's so my sweet. My dad and my mom and my sister are hugging in the driveway, laughing, yelling, come on, Eileen. Yeah. At like two in the morning. Yeah. My parents are fucking these grown... Grown adult parents. Adults. A gro- beyond adults. Older people. Retired. Yeah. Adults. <laughs> I love, they've dude. And f- done adulthood already. It just made me, yeah, they did it and yeah. they've looked back on it already. Yeah. Now they've got <laughs> <laughs> that made me. That made me feel, but that's what our, the culture of my family is. We yeah. like drinking. But always, um, always check down moments of like, no one in my family has ever had like a terrible addiction where it's, it's ruined their lives. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. Because we like to drink. Yeah. But we check each other a little bit. That's you know? good. If you didn't get stuff done, like if you weren't efficient, yeah. you really, you would get embarrassed about drinking. Yeah. Because my whole family was good at that. Yeah. Functioning alcoholics. Is that what, do you think you're a functioning alcoholic? Probably. But I don't, what, you just have like one drink every night? Two drinks every night? I, ha- I No, not every night. So you, then you're not. I know, but al- I think alcoholic has a very, like, I think there's a broad word. Like, yeah. I think I am... I don't think you're not a functioning because you spend most of the day sober, dead sober. All sober all yeah. day. I know, but I think there's levels to it. I think a functioning alcoholic is someone who's drinking all day and still doing their life. I agree, but I also think I'm ad- I am addicted to alcohol. Yeah, but the same way I'm addicted to weed, probably. That's my point. Yeah. So, like, I think it's a level of it, right? Like, I don't. Th- if somebody said you have to get this up for the rest of your life, I'd say it must be life threatening. Otherwise, I won't. Yeah. If you said it's either it's this or death, I'd go fine. I'll live. What about this or sex? Uh, fuck. At this age, it's still. Hey, get- at this age. Yeah. Booze. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, no, what were you going to say? You can still what with sex? Uh, ejaculate other ways, just not vaginal. Oh, fuck, not, that, not even a question. Yeah. yeah, that's not even a question. Yeah. No, but sex is also different as you get older too, right? I've talked about this before. Sex is like... Um, Tell me. Sex changes. Oh. Sex is not just penetration as you get older, especially if you're with someone for a long time. What is it, like experimentation? It can be anything. Yeah. Sex can be like making out and touching a lot. Ugh, my favorite thing to do sexually, mm-hmm. like seriously, is to just sit like Indian style across from a woman hot, and like kiss her in, in underwear yeah, and like kiss each other and like slowly tickle our genitals over the underwear. Oh, uh, that's hot. Like I prefer doing that to sex. That's what I'm, so that's what I'm saying. Sex yeah. changes. As a kid, you think it's just like you got to fuck, especially as a college kid, you're like, I'm going to fucking pump it. I'm going to yeah. slam it as hard as I can. Yeah. Like, I remember fucking so hard in college that my pelvis would get bruised. Yeah. And I thought that was cool. I never... I'm, I'm not, I know, I'm not I know this. you're not a smasher. I'm this. You're a rubber. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't fucked raw in like five, in like five and a half years. I know. We've talked about this, unfortunately, because I, because you have an illegitimate, and I mean it, an illegitimate yeah. fear of STDs. Well, yeah, I, I talk about this shit way too much. I just did a whole Trojan condom commercial shoot. I know, but they're paying you good money. So not... It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> It is fucking crazy. Yeah, it's nuts. It is fucking crazy. So tell, say this. Let's shift gears. Mm-hmm. No more sex stuff. We have been pretty sexual. I, thought, I don't care. But that's, I think fans that's cool. Like it. Yeah. Fans like it. And if they don't, they turned out. They, turn, they fucking turned out. I think it's been off. honest conversation. No, it's very honest. In here, we pour whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. This episode of Whiskey Ginger is brought to you by Buffalo Trace. Buff Trace is the only bourbon with balls. Since 1773, they've been cooking up the good sauce. I've told you this before. I'm going to tell you this again. It is incredible stuff. It is absolutely delicious. It's distilled. It's bottled by Buffalo Trace Distillery. It's 90 proof. Uh, It's in Franklin County, Kentucky. And Buff Trace is all American, family owned, and they're fiercely independent. Don't forget that stuff uh, when you go to pick up a bottle of bourbon because I believe that these guys make some of the best stuff I've ever had in my entire life. The different levels of this are great too. If you don't, uh, if Buffalo Trace isn't your flavor, go try Eagle Rare because that's even better. Go try Blanton's, go try Pappy. All of these are part of the Buff Trace family. Buffalo Trace is an incredible distillery that I visited myself um, and that whiskey is so good and it's uh, it comes from these beautiful big barrels on their property and everybody was scared out of their minds and uh, at the turn of the century, but those people over at Buffalo Trace were sipping whiskey, winning Distillery of the Year by the Whiskey Advocate magazine in the year 2000. And since then, they've won more awards than any other distillery in the world. So when you are thirsty and you want something to sap on, go get yourself some Buff Trace. It's the only bourbon with balls. It's right there on the bottle. Show you nuts. Take a sip. Back to the episode. Ginger. Ginger.
I like Ginger's. People do want to know. Mm -hmm. It is funny that people ask me questions about you. And it's because they know that we did the show together. They know yeah. that we're friends. And I'm like, I, that's his business. I don't know. Yeah. But people ask me about you doing this album and you're making an album. Yeah. People annoy you with that, don't they? Uh, the amount of times you get asked. Well. When are you making an album? When are you making an album? Yeah. And it's just, yeah, it's like I'll, anything I post, it could be like a picture of like, honestly, like, like rest in peace, like grandma. And they'll be like, where's the album though? And I, and I get it because, <laughs> because, uh, I, I, it's unbelievable how long it's taken me to make. It's I didn't see this coming in terms of a take. It's crazy. Like, yeah, but it, you didn't do it on purpose. This no, is, obviously, this is life. I, I'm working very hard. Like, I, I guess I'd feel I, I'd feel bad if I was like lollygagging. But, but I'd also be like, if you know, if my favorite rapper is Drake, if Drake took five years in between albums, I'd be so annoyed at Drake because it's like, man, I need my Drake. But like, not really annoyed, but like, I'd be like, man, and I Can get you it. Still your favorite rapper? Yeah, I love Drake. Still today, Drake and Kanye. Yeah, is a tie for you? Uh. Drake over Kanye. No, it's a tie. I mean, in terms of like, uh, it's a tie. I, discography wise, Kanye's are Kanye's first my, couple my, of my albums. My favorite have, album of all time is Kanye for sure. Which one? College Dropout. Dropout's the best. My album. favorite album. It's not in even the history close. of music. Yeah, it's um, not. It's actually to me of all the albums he's ever made, it's nothing even comes remotely close. I I don't think any body of music by anybody comes remotely close to College Dropout. Like, that's I, big. That's a big leap. Like it's that to me that. It's so clear cut. My favorite album. Do you? But do you? Do you don't put it up against any sort of old school hip hop at all? I you don't think Nas Elmatic is one of the best albums I of all time? I love Nas Elmatic, and it is one of the best albums of all time. But, but that's what I mean. Like that thing front to back is fucking it's incredible. incredible, especially because it's like a nineteen year old kid doing it's it. It's incredible. Nas Elmatic is incredible, and it's just like, it's like you know, uh, who, you know, are you a KD or like Steph? You know, it's like different kind. I of I get games. that right. Two different kind. Right. Yeah. Two different games. What is the? What were some of the most influential hip hop albums when you were a kid? College dropout, like I, yeah. I, I, like I feel like hearing that when I and just the attitude of college dropout is just one of like I'm gonna be me and you can't tell me what to do and I'm gonna be yeah. the best of all time and I feel like that's like how I operate in life. The artwork was incredible too. And the artwork was incredible. I mean the the, the sad, like that musically is so much more elevated than like what what like hip hop like what was coming out at the time right it was way ahead then of and now it's like it's just like it's like people just don't make music like that anymore and it's no like, but he doesn't make music like that anymore either no he doesn't and he, I, I I I'm friends with Kanye and I, I said to him, I was talking to him and I was like I was like couldn't you could just make like more music like that. And he was like, yeah, but like, I don't want to. I already did that. He was like, yeah. why do I want to like try to remake uh, an old wave instead of like make a new one? And I like, agree I'm with like, him. He is, he's totally You know right. why? Because a lot of artists have tried to do that. Yeah. It, does, it just doesn't yeah. work. And he's like, you did that. You have like no Yeezus. I love Yeezus. Yeah. I, I love I Yeezus. Give me some other albums that shaped your youth. Um, Soundtracks to your, to your childhood. Green Day Dookie. So good. Yeah. Again, phenomenal artwork. Back when artwork was really such a big proponent yeah. because you physically held a CD. Yeah. Dookie was such a good album. I love Dookie. Give me another one. Um, I was very into Limp Biscuit. Really? Yeah. What was it? What was what was his album? What was that called? Uh, not there was. Uh, well, first off, actually, I, I need to talk about the Goo Goo Dolls. Like the Goo. -Goo you love the Goo Goo Dolls. I love the Goo Goo Dolls. Uh, what's the name? Uh, the one with Slide on it. Whatever that album is. Yeah, called. whatever that was called. Yeah. It might be called Goo Goo Dolls. I wasn't a Goo Goo Dolls guy, so I don't know. The but thing I, that's crazy. But about, I do want to look it up. You know now. what's crazy about the Goo Goo Dolls that yeah. no one even so all of their so everyone knows their hits or whatever, and like the lead singer John Resnick or whatever. Half of their songs yeah. on their albums, the bass player is the lead singer. Right. Oh, a boy named Goo. A boy named Goo, exactly. Yeah, so with the little boy with his penis being yeah. covered up by the hands. Uh, this that, that that artwork is so recognizable. What's, this, what's the next album? Uh, Dizzy Up the Girl. That's the one that I'm speaking of. Yeah, Dizzy Up the Girl. Um, the That's crazy slide, people yeah. don't realize that. So basically, John Resnick mm -hmm. to me is the lead singer, and he's the ba his voice is incredible. And then the bass player is like great at playing. I mean, every song that this guy sings, the song sucks. I, like right. so half of their every time they put it and it's like unbelievable how like much I guess allegiance that they must have to like splitting up the lead vocal duties right that like you got one who's like it's like having like John Mayer or like you sing and like they still hey. divide you're right it's crazy and I feel like only Goo Goo Dolls fans know that and I wonder if other Goo Goo Dolls fans are as dissatisfied with that hierarchy as I am or are they like Fuck you! You're not a real Goo Goo Dolls fan. Yeah. For not like I wonder what I think. Actually, most people are probably like, "Fuck! I just want 14 songs of John Resnick." I mean, real hardcore GGD GGD fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they probably don't give a fuck at all. They probably some people no, but I I know what you're saying. Like yeah. I, I, but look, I mean, fucking Dave Grohl played 
drums for a long time what and probably career. the greatest band Nirvana of all time and then made and another Foo great that's band. That's crazy. That's almost impossible. It's crazy. It, 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 it's it, You know what that feels I like to me? I love Nirvana. Uh, I like, it's funny because I liked Nirvana a lot yeah. as a kid. They weren't my like favorite band, mm -hmm. uh, but I think, <sighs> Eminem. Eminem. I think Dave Grohl's second half of his career was much stronger than he, Nirvana could have ever been. And I mean that wholeheartedly. Well, the Foo Fighters are obviously. I think the, I think the Foo Fighters were so much better of a band than Nirvana could have ever become. I disagree. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I don't think Nirvana ever would have lasted. No way. They, they were a moment in time, a beautiful moment a in time. Bit, no, they would have. They, if Kurt Cobain didn't die, they, he'd be making bad music. He'd be doing what Green Day did. Don't want to be an American. No, idiot. he wouldn't. See, that's not. No, never. That's not yeah. Kurt. Nope. Yep. I mean, but I would have said that about Billy Joe too. Same thing. See. I would have said the exact same thing. I would have said Dookie, uh, I, I, that album alone would have made me think, or Kerplunk, the it's ones tough, before that. It's tough for these guys, you know, who enter so rebellious. Well, they're young, and, and they're young. young. That's my. That's what I'm saying. They're to young. To be then, like, 32, and they, they know they can't be, like, rebellious and be taken seriously, so at that point, they're just like, all right, let's get this money. Yes, yeah, see? And they make, like, the hits. Or, or, like Chris Rock says, some of the worst things that can happen to a comedian is too much money. Because too much money to a lot of comedians, they lose touch completely. Yeah. I'm not going to name names, but there's guys, dude, if yeah. I showed you what they do now, you'd be sad. Yeah. Guys, legends from our youth. Yeah. That's the problem. Too much of everything. It's like you lose touch, yeah. you know? Dude, that 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 whole album of Dookie was basically about being poor and jerking off in a shitty apartment yeah. in Oakland. It yeah. was like, it was like, how can I fucking not lose my mind while also losing my mind? Yeah. And now, you know, they're now they're like, like staunch Democrats who like preach about their politics and you're like, oh man. I don't know. Older, I want. They're probably like what forty or fifty at this point. Seventy or eighty now. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite childhood album? Uh, Pearl Jam Vitology was definitely one of them. Yeah. Probably one of the best albums I've ever heard in my life, front to back. Uh, Gangstar's Moment of Truth or Hard to Earn. I loved both of those things so yeah. very much. Gangstar was probably my favorite group of all time. Yeah. A a like of all time, and then uh, I love Jay Z and Eminem. Jay Z too. Volume early, two. Early, Volume two early for Jay Z. Eminem, uh, took my breath away. You mean very first album or, or Shady LP, the Shady the real Shady LP, that one? I mean the first and second album, like right. the one with my name is like the Dr. Dre. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, when that came out, I was like fucking like 12 or something, and I was just like right in his wheelhouse. It and changed like, my life. Yeah. I, the, 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 way, the, music, the music was so different than anything I'd ever heard in hip hop. Yeah. That it was shock. It was like scary almost. I was like, whoa, this is like. Remember how like, that's the thing about like, I'm like, like I think to myself like, man, like. Back when like the VMAs were like you, you didn't see the celebrities until like those events. Yeah, yeah, like, they you'd were hidden. You have to wait to like see Eminem, and then you see him, and he's like, the, like now it's like you're so visible. I know. Um, you're too, well, we, you do a good job of staying a little bit distant, right? Yeah, but I think most of the time it's because I'm so ashamed that it's been five years since I put an album out that like I don't even want people to see me like, you know, Instagramming like you shouldn't me have watching shame for the that. Sixers. Why? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to start Instagramming more when the show comes out and like with my music comes out. Instagram live is always so scary. Why? What if I say something crazy? What are you going to say? I don't know. Like, oh. You did use, you chant, kill the Jews on set. I love set. Kid Rock. And yeah. like, which is like such a, and I, I did love Kid Rock. And then, <laughs> then all of a sudden he does racist stuff and then all of a sudden it's like, you know. Does he like, do racist shit? I think so. What does he do? I don't know. I don't, I don't even, and maybe even, even saying it's like that type of thing on Instagram live. Is, he, 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 he's a big Trump guy, I think. I think so too. Yeah. That, which is tight. Do your thing, dude. Fly private jets. Mm. Fucking live that thug I'll life. I'll tell you what. I love Ba What the Ba. Ba What the Ba What the Ba. Joe C. Bang, rest da, in da, peace. Da, da. The midget. Dude, he was great. How'd he die? Just, I think. Fell off a roller certain, coaster. I don't know. Um, Shouldn't have got on. It did said he fell you off have, a roller coaster? Yeah, yeah. You know those, are, you have to be tall. Oh, yeah, you're joking. Like, yeah. Oh. You, <laughs> you know, you have to be this tall to ride this ride. Yeah, he didn't yeah. obey the sign. Uh, for a second, I thought that's insane. He just fell right out of the seat. Yeah. He fell right out of the seat. Did you know that the founder of the Segway? Yeah, he died on a Segway. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Insane. Look at me. Perfect. Yeah. The guy who made the Atkins diet died as well. Atkins? Atkins. Atkins. Yeah. Died. By maintaining the Atkins diet? Yeah. You can't eat that much fucking meat. That's crazy. You just eating meat is like a, and I'm probably misquoting like yeah. the exact science of it, but I think he had a heart attack. Yeah, I love the impossible meat. You like it? I love it. Tried it? Can't? I just can't do it. it. Tastes like a burger to me, and then I feel so good about like. I guess, but it's also so chemically processed. They say those things aren't good for you either. Better for the earth. How do you know? We have it's not a long enough time. It's like vaping, right? We don't know how bad it is yet. I don't know. It's we haven't had enough test the time. Cow meat is bad. Kind of. 
Oh, it's really bad. For the earth. Yeah, like kill the, the rate in which we slaughter cows because like and like and breed cows. Not even slaughter, just breed, breeding them. Breed cows because they keep the, them pregnant for they, milk because they fart. And yeah. The, the, it's and the methane. Yeah, the goes gas. into the air and it's a huge carbon thing. I know, but but that's the animal's fault, not ours. Yeah, it's God's fault, really. He did it. The Lord. If you could have taken one animal, if you're Noah and you have the ark. Yeah. Because you, I could see you being Noah. <sighs> one animal I got. And you only can take one on the ark. What would it be? If they're like, Noah, you, know, you can only do one. That's a great question. Well, who are you going to take on? Which one? Probably the panda bear. Mm, why? I just think they're adorable. They're so cute. Like, I'm not They're kidding. supposed to be vicious, by the way. I'm sure. Yeah. If I had an option, truly, of like a girlfriend, I mean, this isn't true. I mean, a wife is different. Like... Like, uh, if I had the option of, like, dating a girl who yeah. was, like, really hot and, like, who, like, I wasn't, like, in love with, but, like, I really liked her and respected her and, like, she, and it was just a, it was, like, a perfect situation for, like, three months where I was, like, totally sexually satisfied and... She did everything. I, it was, like, so, it was such a, resp- like, not wife, because I wouldn't trade anything for a wife, but, like, the, like, the perfect fling or I live with a panda bear who's trained to where every time I come home, he rises and stands and walks and he hugs me. Mm. And then he goes back to and just lies down and like all he does is lie and watch television. Like I can lie on him mm-hmm. and like he'll hug and all he does is lie and hug. I would pick the panda bear. Any day of the week. Every day. I mean, that sounds like the dream. I How might, many hugs do you get a day from the panda bear? I think just like, you know. Anytime you enter the room? Uh, maybe. You know, if you get a dog, it's kind of similar. You have a dog? No, you don't have a dog. Yeah, I Where's do. Where's your dog right now? She's in the room. Oh. She was barking when you came in. Oh, I didn't even Remember? notice. She wanted to see you, but she gets excited. Yeah. And oh. I wanted to put away because otherwise she wouldn't believe it. She would. You know what she does is really cute. She sniff when she were in here yeah. recording. She'll sniff the door and she'll go <sighs> to oh. let her to let us know that I, yeah. that she wants to come in here. Dude, a dog is the exact same thing. Yeah. Greets you with such excitement. Yeah, it does. She piddles. More you know, standard. You know what that is? No. She pees when she sees me. That's bad. She gets so excited she pees. That must suck for you. No, I clean. I lick it right up. Mm. I love See, my I dog. I can't get a dog. It's like, you just don't know what you're getting. Like, I got friends who got dogs. And you're like, right. You don't know what you're just getting. Like, like, That's true. They're just like, they're going like, every breath they take, they go... And then like I couldn't like I can't live with that. that yeah, but that, that's a like kind that. of dog. Yeah, you have to get a certain kind or of dog. Or they fart all the time. Yeah, or they, they do. bark. Like, it's like... My dog doesn't bark. You don't even know. You don't even know I had a dog. No, I don't even know. She barked when you came to the door because whenever someone comes to the door, she barks. Yeah. But once you're in here and she can smell you and knows that you're part of the crew. I was so enamored by your haircut. You like my new hair, my yeah. little army haircut? It's tight. Yeah, this is in case I get shipped off to World War Three yeah. that we're about to get in. You're very like ready to play like an old role, like yeah. a like an older, like a war movie role. Yeah. Pick up those shells. Yeah. See me back at the bunker at noon. Yeah, that's that's me. Yeah, that's me. I could be in an old war movie. I don't want to act that much anymore though. Really? Yeah, I think doing our show is kind of like I want to just do. You're really good though. I know, but I want to do things that only that I want to do anymore. But you're actually a really good, like, I think a lot of stand-up comedians Mm -hmm. are bad, like, noticeably bad actors. Well, don't just say that. I think a lot of actors are probably bad actors. Totally. A lot of people are bad actors. But you're, like, as a guy who's, like, you, as a guy who's sifting through the footage every day. Yeah. There are a lot of moments in the show that aren't even funny. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that, there's a lot of stuff that's real. And you're so, like, believable. Well, here's what you should say. Let's say this to the fucking, to the people at home. They, They should know. You wrote the show, you're producing the show, you're yeah. editing the show, oh, you made yeah. music for the show. Yeah. You're doing all the fucking, you're, you're, you're lifting way too many weights. Well, it's called Dave. My name's on the line. Doesn't I know, but still, dude, a lot of people don't do that. I got to tell yeah. you, you... Hands on. A lot of people don't do that. I you don't, you don't I don't know if you know that enough because it's not like... You I have no context. Well, you haven't lived in TV long enough no. to know that. Like A lot of people take, take, take a lot of time away from things and let other people take over. And... <sighs> Probably to your credit and to your discredit, that yeah. probably hurts you sometimes. Yeah, you're spending a lot of time on the I show. I spend a lot of time. I just I feel like I have to, you know, I delegate to certain extents, but you barely delegate. Be I real. Ba- I barely delegate. Yeah, you're but you're hard at that. The things you're good at delegating yeah. are like things that you know you definitely don't want to do. If yeah. you're like, or like that, I'm not great at. If or or things that you're like, that's a waste of my time. Yeah. If you're I like, I just like uh, have very strong opinions, and it's like I like you do. If 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 something was if we were like left with footage or there was this one little flaw, all I would do when I watched the entire episode is look at that flaw yeah, and, just, and think about the negativity that comes along with that flaw. And that's a horrible feeling. And I don't, I would just, I want to feel like, Oh, I did my best in terms of making sure that I didn't get those flaws. And if the flaw isn't there, it's not my fault. I gave it my all. That's a fact. Yeah. Right. Then you have the, then you have the last check down. I'm okay with failure. 
not really, but like I can I was live with. I know you're not. I'm not, but like what I'm what I'm not okay with is what if. So it's like I need yeah. to like always feel like I did my best. Yeah, but you, I mean, the, the best foot forward on the show, right? Yeah. The guy that produced uh, the show uh, and directed the show or co yeah. co directed produced the show, Jeff Shaver, who did the league and yeah. he did Curb this year. Yeah. And then we had a, f- a phenomenal crew of people that came on the show. Young Thug, who sure. I was bummed I didn't get to see. Yeah. Trippy Red. Yeah. Uh, Gunna. Gunna. Uh, Tierra Wack. Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber, Corey whose Kardashian. album you're on. Yeah, I'm on Justin Bieber's album. That's awesome. Isn't that, isn't that wild? It is wild. Like, I very he, rarely am like, oh my God, this is, let's take a step back and appreciate like what you've accomplished in life. But being on Bieber, Bieber's album as well, how many cameos are on that album? I think like, I don't know, like four, four or five. Yeah. Not a lot. I read, I, I read, I read yeah. the title tags and I was like, yeah, each one of those songs is only him. I mean, when the reality is like, when I started rapping, I did not know, like, it was not to like become a rapper. Like, I didn't, I didn't even believe I had that in me to that extent. It was right. like, oh, I think I'm like worthy of being a, a comedian. This is a good way to get noticed for that. So like the fact that like that was the origin and like I've just worked hard enough to where five years later I'm a good enough rapper where the biggest pop star in the world in the world is asking me to be on his album. It's like a total like it's like incredible. But he's asking you to be on the album because of a mutual respect. He's done. He did Earth with you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, it's so he almost- hit me and said, man, I think you're one of the best rappers like in the game. Do you think do you think what you did on um <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Well, you did on. Oh, was it cough? I know. You say bless you for cough too. Yeah. All right. How about this? <laughs> what is that? God bless. How about this? Uh, uh, you cool? That's a good one. Yeah. yeah you <laughs> <laughs> when you did uh, when when you did um, on Sway's show. Yeah. That's my. Do you, do you think that's? Do you think that's? That's why Bieber hit me. He hit me about that. But do you think that's the? Do you think that's the illest freestyle you've ever done? That's the. Yeah. I mean. When people say, like, what are you the most proud of? That's it. I think that's the thing I, like, would, if I were to have to show anybody, like, three minutes of, like, content. Yeah. Like, I could, I mean. L- l- let me ask you this. As yeah. someone who's a diehard hip-hop fan. Yeah. The idea when I was a kid, when yeah. we were kids, because yeah. we're similar in age. Yeah. I'm a little older, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think you're, like. I'm 36. So you're five years older. <sighs> Doesn't feel that way. We feel like peers. I know we are. Yeah. But, I mean, when I, when I was a kid, um which changed in hip hop over the time too was freestyling was always off the dome. Yeah. That was always a thing. Yeah. And then freestyling changed completely. Mm-hmm. It's just the name. Yeah. It's just Isn't like, that funny though? But that no one ever really talks about it. I know. It's just kind of like, it, it's a part of the world. Yeah. Because I say that, that what you did on Sway was a freestyle, but it, no, it, it was, wasn't necessarily a freestyle. It was a, it was, it was a written verse. It was, well, I, it was, how, I mean, how many bars did you do? It was a four minute, and no well, one could five minutes off the top of their head lyrics that complex. Like, yeah, it, no, it'd be impossible. It'd be impo- right? You'd have to be like a rocket. I mean, unless you're the, one of the greatest rappers of all time, like you, Nick Cannon, who's the greatest rapper of all time. Period. You know who the best freestyle I've ever seen is? Yeah, Juice World, who died. Juice, yeah. Have you ever seen his freestyles? Yeah, they're they're so they're never ending. Like, you can do it for like an hour, and, and yeah. he makes total sense the entire time, and is actually really inc- like good, and, like intricate flow patterns. He, like to me, he was the best freestyle I've ever seen, and, and, he, and he was like the best hit maker. He was like, I really feel like he was the most talented uh, like songwriter in music. Did you you know Big L right? Yeah, Big L's ninety eight freestyle. Yeah, was a freestyle. I'm sure. So that to me was one I mean, of the best I've ever heard. Jay Z freestyle. Well, Jay Z, Lil Wayne freestyle. Like they, they, I don't. I, what a luxury it must be to like go. I mean, I, I I can't imagine they're just going in there and like doing one. Juice did that. My friend Benny worked with Juice. Yeah, and would say he would go in the booth, go three minutes over the beat, and it'd be a hit. And then he'd say, okay, another one. And then he'd go three minutes over the beat and it'd be a different hit. Shit. And then he'd be like, just pick whatever version you he want. You tell Benny to cut yeah, it up. Yeah, no, not even cut it up. Just like pick, like which hit do you want? Because like he would just do a di- he he freestyle the whole song is freestyled. Ugh, hits. Ugh, like smash hits. How how how? Yeah, I sit in my room for six months and write a verse. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This guy goes in there and it's four minutes and it's a smash. But the brain just works in different ways. It does. Your brain will collect itself in different times, right? Yeah. And one day you'll write a ton of shit and then one day you'll write no shit. Yeah. Isn't that how you do it? Yeah. I, that's I, I, that's I, how I do it. Yeah. I'm I'm always very observant and just writing notes down at all times. Sometimes I feel bad about it because I'll be like, I'll just experience such an insanely interesting moment with another human being. And rather than like live in that moment with them, I'll be like, I have to write this down. Well, you are. You're writing it down and then you're living in it right after. Yeah. You want to remember it. It's just, I have such a bad natural memory. Like I will forget it. If I I don't write it down, I will totally forget what happened. What about your long term? Uh, It's solid. Short term is terrible. Horrible. I think it's probably smoking weed. I'm the polar opposite. Yeah. My short term. 
is is honestly atrocious. Uh, it, I mean, is great. I'm yeah. sorry. My long term is embar- it's embarrassing. My long term is pretty good. My youngest I can remember of like vivid memories yeah. would be like eight or nine. That's very old. No. Is it young? Some people like, can go up to like four, five, yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying so like you don't have a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, eight or nine That's maybe. Late. Yeah, maybe 10 even. Yeah. Maybe 14. I don't, re- I don't, I, 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 yeah, no. One of my earliest memories is my cleaning woman at the time lifting me up by my hair, lifting me out of the air, but. What was her name? Uh, Lisa. What, 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 uh. But she, what, but what race I, was she? Uh, like, like Hispanic. I don't know. What I, did she call you? The thing is. Little Dave. The thing is when I say this to my mother, she says, there's no way that happened. So she like, doesn't believe it. No. What, why? Because it sounds atrocious. It sounds crazy. I mean, it is crazy and it's possible. You know how like you can misremember things. Well, we do this thing where we, there's a theory for it and I can't think about it. I can't think of the name, but we, we compile a myriad of both true stories and things from our society or like the social narrative. And sometimes those things intertwine and they yeah. become your reality. Yeah. There was a guy named James Frey who wrote a book called Million Little Pieces. It's a phenomenal fucking book. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Oprah put it on her book club. And then okay. a year later, um, basically chastised him publicly because it came out that it was, a, it, I think it was quoted as being a nonfiction a memoir. And then it came out that the story wasn't completely true. It was embellished and it was, a, it was filled with hyperbole, right? Yeah. Well, she fucking took it away, which essentially gives the takes away the gold seal, and it banished this guy. This guy was like a, it was almost like plagiarism yeah. in in the journalistic world. But it wasn't plagiarism. Yeah. He was simply just divulging more than perhaps could have been the truth. Yeah. But that's what we all do as storytellers. Yeah. So it bothered the shit out of me. That's interesting. It bothered me so much that she did that that yeah. I was like, you basically made this guy out to be. You put the like the black mark on him to be like he's a he's the bad he's. He's not real and not true, and he's a liar. It's like, no, he just... He's a human. He's a human. He, he, we all embellish stories. So whatever yeah. this was that you remembered as a kid, yeah. it's, it, a it's your reality because it is. Yeah. Like what? She pulled you by your hair. Lifted me up. It's cause I, and the reason was because I kept... I, was, I remember lying on... We were watching TV, and I was just like lying on top of her. I was that small where I could just lie on top of another person. What do you mean? Like on her back? I feel like my memory was like her on her side and me like on top of her like this. Okay. And then I just kept having to pee. And I was you gotta get up and pee. Yeah, and she, I think I got up one time too many, and she said, "But the key, I mean, that sounds crazy." Just say it. She just lifted me up on my hair, and I don't remember. I just remember. It's like, have you ever seen Inside Out? The pics. I love that movie. Yeah, it's like this was one of my core memories. That is a core memory, yeah. right? It logged in core. Yeah. She picked you up by your head. It hurt your feelings. It hurt my head, my scalp. But did you cry? Yeah. Yeah, hard. Yeah, I was physically abused. And you told your mother, and she was like, "That didn't happen." No. Yeah, I can't remember if I told her at the time. That's the thing. I don't. I, don't, I, I probably didn't rat. She was your babysitter or house cleaner. I think kind of two in one. She all the above. I think so. I had a woman that babysat me. That was a, uh, um, a Puerto Rican girl named Lisa. Was her first name as well. Yeah. No shit. That's crazy. And she used to you go. Think it was my Lisa. I'd go Lisa, and she'd go what? Uh? She would do that all the time because mm. I go Lisa, and I'd yell the A. It was the same Lisa. It was yours. Yeah. I, my parents got her because of your family. Yeah. Your parents were like, "You'll love her," you know. <laughs> <laughs> You love her. No, but she used to go, I used to go, Lisa, what a... And then one day her family, I was staying at her house because my mom was doing something lo- like late into the night. Drugs, yeah. drugs. And... Um, no, 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 no. Oh, my mom was sober. She didn't do that stuff. But um, she, I was over at their house and Exorcist, we watched the movie Exorcist. Do you know the movie Exorcist? Yeah. And Logan has been around. Yeah. And I had the worst nightmares for months. Yeah. And my mom found out about it. She got so mad. Yelled at Lisa forever about it. Like, why would you let him watch that? That's insane. Like, but I felt bad because I should have just not told her I had nightmares because I really wanted to watch the movie. Yeah. Like, I was like, I just want to see it so bad. Yeah. You asked for it. I did. It was my fault. It was my fault. I did Lisa wrong. But you were a child, and that's what she got. My my mother fired her, and then she got deported. Actually? No. Uh (laughs) Oh. I don't know what happened. She could be dead. I have no idea. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so, like I, there's a lot of things about my youth that I don't really remember that are vague because it was, I don't know what it, I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was just. Do you think you're repressing like sad maybe. memories and? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I, no abuse though. Yeah. Like, it was never hit. Just redheaded mistreatment. Yeah, mistreatment by the society. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you piece of shit! That's what they'd yell out you're the window. You're a freak. Freak. 
Loser. Yeah. Fire crotch. Yeah. Uh, Opie. You're nasty. You're nasty. <laughs> Sometimes they would just boo me. I'd walk into a yeah. store, they'd go, boo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were heckled. And, 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 and I would go like this. I would, I would curl up, you know, like, yeah. a, like Quasimodo almost, you know? Yeah. And they'd throw tomatoes at me. Yeah. They'd be like, here's more red for you, loser. And they would huck them at me as you hard as they could. You didn't have a beard back then, too. I did have a beard back you then. You did. I had a beard when I was eight. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's so fucked up, though? I had facial hair in high school. I grew facial hair in eighth grade. That is fucked up. You're probably I, a big, tall kid. I was not big. I was tall. Yeah. I was skinny as a fucking rail. Yeah. When I got to college, it was like, Bruh. then I got fat. Yeah. And then it all kind of like leveled itself out. Yeah. But I was always tall. I was probably 6'1". My sophomore year. Have you ever been able to dunk? I dunked a bunch. I've, ta- I've talked about it on this podcast. That's awesome. Yeah. That must year, be cool. Many a moons ago. You could never go out and dunk right now. I'm 36. So no. Of course not. Yeah. I quit basketball years ago. Yeah. Fucking Taco called me to go play basketball. Yeah. I, no, I don't do I can't. I don't play ball anymore. Yeah. I lift weights and I run to fit in my head. I hate lifting weights. L- I know. I can tell. I love lifting weights. It's like the worst thing to it's do. It's bullshit. It's so bad. Like, there's nothing I'd rather do less than, like, take weights. And move them and, around. And physically lift them. I know. Is that me? Wasn't me. That's very rude. Yeah. I apologize. Turn it off, please. I turned it. I'm it's turning it off. I, turn it back. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Lifting weights is not probably not healthy for you if you if you've waited this long. Well, I, there was a period. Of, so when I got dumped by that girl, mm-hmm. I started lifting. I said, Why? You thought you were going to get jacked. Yeah. And I got jacked. Not jacked, but I got in good. I have you got a, what's called cut. We call I, it cut. I have a body type where if I lifted weights for two months, I would like look ama- like very good. Yeah. But it's just like I just I'm very, I have good metabolism and natural athletic build. Yeah. Um, and I lifted back then for the first time. I, I, was, I was so weak back then I couldn't even bench the bar. The bar? Could not even bench the bar. Do you know how much the bar weighs? 45 pounds. Yeah, you couldn't do that. Could not do it once. Literally. I could, was, you, could you do it today? Today I could, but I'm, I mean, today I couldn't even do 45s on both sides. No way. No, that'd be tough, huh? Yeah. That's yep. where I actually, I mean, that's not easy. 45s on each side? I got to a place where I could do that for like eight. Eight reps? I think something like it. <laughs> I'm always a core guy. I'm, I'm a core strength to you man. for some reason. Yeah. You're a core guy? Core strength you, guy. <laughs> you have abs? Not really. Let me see. Lift up your shirt. Too much stomach acne. I don't want to show. Oh, that. come on, baby. You know you. you well, know I just you got know. treatment on it. And it's all Wait, right. do you really? Yeah, I just started going to a new woman. Well, I don't want to talk about. Well. Go ahead. No. You went to a new, you went to a new dermatologist. dermatologist? Yeah, and it's, it's. How many have you gone through? I mean, like six. Six people? Six dermatologists? Yeah. Because they're, I mean, it's just hope. It's new. It's new hope every time. <laughs> I'm gonna open up a place called New Hope new Dermatology. Hope. <laughs> that would that's a great It's a New Hope. New Hope Dermatology. Well, look at it like this. You're a good, sweet man, and people wanna be around you, including the opposite sex. Yeah. And when the show comes out in a week, more people are gonna be around you of the opposite sex. Do you think it's gonna do a number for me? I hope so. I hope the babes like it. I think they're I think this show I think women will Comment like the below show. if if you're a babe and and you're and you're interested in Dave with or without Body acne. Look right into the camera. Well, confidently. So no matter what. Yeah. I treat you well, and I'm smart and funny, mm-hmm. and I am a really good person. That's a fact. So if you're okay with a blemish or th- you know 34 blemishes, then you know let's chill. Then it's very chill. Yeah. What's your perfect first date? Pitch this to the girl. I say we meet at a local bar. Name it. The galley. Got it. Nautical themed. Love that. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking the oldest bar in Santa Monica. It is. There's peanut shells strewn on the ground. Love it. String lights everywhere. I mean, it looks like Christmas at all times there. Mm-hmm. It's always the holidays. It's the place you walk in, you think, oh, I could fall in love in this venue. Yeah. Um, you, she said, you say, meet you there. You me, tell her, meet me meet there. Meet me there. I'm okay. going to be there about two minutes early. You're going to be about four minutes late. And I'm going to stand outside for six minutes and I'm going to think. Yeah. Ooh. I'm going to think it all through. And then you'll come in and 
We'll joke about the menu because everything's got funny names and they're all nautical themed. It is funny. They'll come and they'll bring a drink over and it's actually their drinks are a little stiff. Yeah, they're very stiff. They're very stiff. They pour um, them right there. Which honestly, I mean, it's like fun starts like it's like one drink in and everyone's like, it's like spring break. Yeah. You know what I mean? Daytona. And, you know, the waitress is coming by and she's like, can I, can I get you guys something to eat? Actually, I used to, so I used to, I, I'm like a serial dater or I was, I like, I've gone on more dates than any person. But now you're chilling. Now I'm chilling. But like, there was a time where like at this place, the galley, like where I went there, like on like 75 first dates within like an eight month span to like, (laughs) where like, I was hoping the waitresses there wouldn't be like, good to see you again, Mm -hmm. man. Like again, like who's like. One I've never time, been here. One time a waitress, when my date went to the bathroom, and she was a cute waitress too, and she was like my server a lot, and my date goes to the bath- bathroom, and she comes by, and she says, so what do I do to have to be one of these girls you always bring here? Ooh. And I started flirting with her, and then my other date came. That was, was, was like a high peak feeling for me in terms of like, wow, like I'm like like really like developing into my own physique. Do you, do you, did you ever connect with a waitress? No. because You don't I, date waitresses? No, I do actually. Yeah. I mean, it's like you can't date a waitress at a place that you go to often. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, you don't want shit where you eat. Yeah, you can't. Because then, then you, yeah, it's like that's a classic blunder. Especially if it's a place you. Like. I did leave my number on a waitress and on a on a receipt one time, and it worked. Did it? Actually, she threw it out, and then her coworker found it and gave it to her. I don't they, like. I don't know how she they, threw it out on an accident. Yeah, but she she didn't like. She just didn't see and the it. The coworker was like, "Oh, this is the guy's number." Yeah. And did you end up seeing her? Yeah. And. And we hooked up a few times. She's a lovely girl. Lovely girl. Yeah, it was very fun. You she could. she likes um, slow. Um, touching genital touching, just intimacy. Indian intimate. Indian leg stuff, Indian cross leg. <sighs> Man, sorry. Why you took you back? Huh? Yeah, I'm just thinking. You had a moment, didn't you? I was just thinking. 2015, just going back. <laughs> <laughs> you sat right in it for a hot minute. It was so nice. It was like one of the greatest moments of your life. Just nice. I felt you feel it. It's a very nice like. Have yeah, you when you guys do the genital touching? Do you come in your underwear? Oh, so much pre cum. So much. I mean, pre-cum. my I'm just soaked. Oh, that's um, cute. I have come in my. I mean, no, yeah. no, from t- just from the touching on top. I, I mean that that well, that's hap- Yeah, that happened last year at a wedding. I got a over the underwear hand job and came. At the wedding. At, in the hotel afterwards. In the room. In the room. Have you ever hooked up out in public? One time I had sex on the beach. On the beach. One time. It's Terrible like, place to fuck. It was one of my favorite sexual experiences. Sand just, all was, over the place. Yeah, it was. Just, it, for what it worked out. It was very cute and it was just very sweet. You got to be close enough to the water where the sand is yeah. a little bit. I've never fucked not... in public. I've never no. I never. I'm. I'm pretty un. Like public sex is hard. Yeah, have you fucked in public? <sighs> well, yeah. You ever fucked while driving? I got my I got my peen sucked while driving. But never fucked. No, fucking while driving is almost almost yeah. like absurdly yeah. risky. Yeah. yeah. Even in porn, I'm like, how did they fake this? Yeah. That's crazy. Is there porn people who are fucking while driving? It's a whole website called peoplefuckingwhiledriving.com. Fucking. Peoplefuckingwhiledriving.com. What's the position? What do you, what do you mean? She's on top, oh, and right. he and he's going like this. Okay. Looking, yeah. That's cool. Go to people while fucking, uh, peoplefuckingwhiledriving.com. We got to buy like that one website. one of those lemonparty.org things with, yeah. the, with the dick <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thick hurricane dick? Yeah. Um, in one week from today, Woo. our television show comes out on mm. FXX. Hulu, all the good jazz. Oh, man. It's this... called Dave. This is Dave. Yeah. It's I... a wonderful fucking show. If you want to know what the gist of it is, because the billboard probably wouldn't tell you much. No. It's a comedy about the life of a young Jewish Philly kid. Entrepreneurial spirit. With an entrepreneurial spirit <laughs> and a circle of friends that support his his chaos. Yeah. That, if, that was, if that was a log line, that's the one I would yeah. say. I think it's just like, you know, they say write what you know and like I happen to like live like an incredibly funny, entertaining life. Like I'm literally like a rapper. Yeah, you get to do that for a living. And I go around the world rapping. And now like, you get to be a comedic I, I actor. Perform and like, you know, it's like the thing like literally like I'll be at like a venue and like two girls will come up to me and be like, we'll both give you head right now at the same time. Oh, and I'll be like, nice. I'll be like, who raised you? Yeah. You don't even know me. Yeah. But you, but you still let them no. do it. Oh, that's actually a, I would never. That's a no, no man. No two at once. No, I never. I would like to get. I would like. I that. think you should let two girls suck your penis at once. I'd like that to happen. I, I jer- think that's a very valid. That's a type thing. of porn I'll jerk off to a lot. Girls, if you're out there and you want to suck Dave's penis, and there's two of you, go ahead and comment in the comments below. Uh, but no and pressure. we can set it up. Zero pressure. Um, 
I love you to death. I love you so much. We're going to go to a comedy show right now. I can't wait. I'm, I'm, it's going to be fun. This was a surprise. And I'm yeah, excited. it's I'm, a good surprise. Yeah, I'm, yeah very happy. Uh, please watch our show. Also, um, next week, as a reminder, I'm going to be in Philadelphia. I'll be in your home fucking town. Yeah, and all my friends better turn up for his... I think my friends are coming to your thing. Yeah, and if they don't come, I'll be so mad. Yeah, I'll be so fucking yeah, mad. Just t- when's the date? It's, it's, it's I'll, a- be in, I'll be in Philadelphia. It is uh, next, next... I'm there Friday and Saturday. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, Friday and uh, Friday, Saturday, uh, March sixth and seventh. Oh, great! So our show comes out. Watch the fucking show next Dude. week, and then also come see me at the at the Philly Punchline. If you don't, uh, you're, you're not a, a real loser. fan you're and friend. Loser, you're a loser, and you have no. You're, you lack taste. You lack heavy amounts of taste. And please watch the show because I promise you, they you're will. Gonna, you're gonna love it. Yeah, they will. Um, here's what we're gonna. Here's what we do after every show. I, I'm gonna walk off camera, and you're gonna look right into the camera, and you're gonna say one word or one phrase to end the episode. One word or a phrase. Right into the camera by yourself. Go ahead. Do I walk up to the camera? No, you look right in and do it. Pig. In here, we pour whisk, 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 whisk.